Hey besties, welcome or welcome back. Today we're going to do one of my favorite things, which is crafting with cutting boards. I can't wait to show you all these different ideas. I hope they inspire you. So let's get started. This is a cutting board from Ikea and these are robot transfers from the Dollar Tree. I cut out a few of the words that said spring and one that said tiptoe through the tulips. I guess I just didn't particularly like that one. And what I did was I left everything else on there that I really liked and I kind of positioned to see if it would fit on the cutting board. And then I laid it exactly where I wanted it. And then I took my little scraper tool and I had to go over every single part. So this was a little time consuming, but oh my gosh, you guys, this is so worth it. This looks so high end and expensive when it's done and it's gorgeous. And I took the S from the word spring that I cut off so that I could have it say S for our last name. Some polycrylic one coat by Minwax. Did a couple coats on the top and that's it. That is all it took and this looks so gorgeous and so expensive. And that cutting board was less than $10 and the transfer was $1.25. I absolutely love this one. What do you think? two-sided things, I'm going to turn that IKEA cutting board over and we're going to do something different to the back. And so one you can use, you know, during the nice months of the year and one will be just for the summertime only. I've got these cute little ice cream cone napkins. There were 16 and they were all two ply. And then the best way to get rid of the plies is to use some around the back, put a little piece of tape, and then it will just kind of pull apart gently. Actually, much easier than if you don't use a piece of tape. I'm going to lay down some Mod Podge on the surface where I'm going to put that napkin. And then I'm just going to try to center it the best I can. And I'm going to lay that napkin down very gently with my fingers. And once I have it in place, I'm going to get out my brayer. Because it's not wet on the top, I can roll the brayer across. Then I'm going to lay down some Mod Podge on the top and it's being very careful to mind the ends and make sure that they lay down. I did actually get it a little too wet at the top on the right and I have to do a little repair, which is kind of cool because I can at least show you how I did it. Just cut off a piece of a napkin and I'm just going to lay it right over it and put some Mod Podge on it and it fixes where it kind of smudged up a little bit. Take me back to when we were kids and they didn't care if we were acting stupid. I'm going to use some Dollar Tree twine and I'm just going to line the little like diagonal lines on the cone, kind of bring it to three dimensional. I love doing that. So just very carefully, I'm going to glue down little pieces of the twine and cut them off when I reach the end. And I'll go back and forth so they almost look like they're interwoven. You'll see here in just a second. There you go. And I love that look. And then I've got this really cute kind of, I don't know, um, I guess you would call it like an ombre yarn. It's very thin. I believe I got it from Walmart. And I'm just going to line the outside of the ice cream. And that also brings that to life. And I really love it. I think it came out super, super cute. And then I've got some ribbon from the Dollar Tree. There's some rickrack ribbon and then like a plaid. So I'm going to use two pieces of the plaid, two of the each the pink and the blue rickrack. I'm going to make a messy bow where you just crisscross them. And I put a little piece of that very fine pink yarn underneath it. I'm just going to tie off a knot and then wrap it around to give it a little bit of a center. And then I'll knot it again and I'm going to put a dab of hot glue on it and set it right on the neck of the cutting board. And that's it. What a cute little summer cutting board, and it's two-sided, which I love. Do you like to do two-sided things? You'll have to let me know if that's one of your kind of favorite things to do like mine.
my friends, I want to invite you to come with me to a crafty cruise getaway with four other channels here from YouTube where you can enjoy beaches and sand and tons and tons of crafting inspiration. This ship has so many amenities that you are going to just have a blast. Plus, you get to connect with other crafters. But here's the thing. Space is very limited. So make sure you go to craftycruisegetaway.com to get all the information that you need. Everything is linked down below in the description box. This cutting board at the Target Dollar Spot along with these little stickers. They look like tiles and it came two in the pack for $5 with the cutting board. I'm just gonna take off one of the little stickers and you know, they, at first I thought they were white but that's just the background. So whatever you put it on, it will show the background. And that looked really cute. So I just put the one on, I used my brayer to make sure it was nice and flattened out. And then I'm just gonna take a nail file from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna go around the edges and make sure I get rid of any excess going in a downward motion. I've got a stencil. Now it's not adhesive. I do not have the best, I guess, luck with stencils that aren't adhesive. I taped it down, I did a dabbing motion, and I gotta tell you, I don't know why, but I just can't seem to do a stencil like this. It's like a reusable stencil that isn't adhesive, but I can't do it without bleeding. I don't know. I've tried everything, but I actually did fix it, so I guess it's all it's okay. But anyway, I'm going ahead and I'm just dabbing like you're supposed to and expecting really good results. And look, not so good. I probably should have done Mod Podge first, but I don't know. I just didn't. So I sanded a bunch of that excess away, and then I'm going to take a fine art brush, and I'm going to go in and fix where I maybe got rid of too much. It went on and on. And I even used a little Dremel tool at one point to get between and around the letters. So I roughed up the little cutting board, which was kind of cute because it made it look a little bit rustic, which I'm okay with. Anyway, so that's done. And then I'm going to get this cute ribbon that I ordered on Amazon. It's just like a ticking stripe. I'm going to cut a little piece, hot glue it to the back and around, and it'll just be an extra little like decor around the neck of the cutting board. Now I've got this really pretty, um, well I think it's pretty, nautical twine from the Dollar Tree. It's like mixed with white and regular twine color. And I'm just going to tie it around that neck and make a little knot in the front. And then I'll just trim the ends. And I just thought it was kind of cute hanging there. I didn't want to go too crazy with this one. <laughs> Maybe I already did. I don't know. And then I continue to sand a little more, just trying to get rid of any of the part where it's smudged a little. And I will cover the whole thing with Mod Podge. And that's it. I really like this one. You'll have to let me know what you think. cutting board. It's a plastic one from the Dollar Tree. And then I've got this little uh, piece of wood with chicken wire from Dollar General and this gorgeous napkin I got this year at the Dollar Tree. I really wanted a white one, but they didn't have it. So I'm just going to paint it white with my Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. It takes two coats. And for some reason, I thought the camera was on and it wasn't, but I laid down some Mod Podge, put a piece of the napkin on and used my brayer. And then I just used my fingers to like push down against the seam there. And I'm going to use an X-Acto knife and very gently cut around the edges. It's very hard because, you know, you can't see what you're doing underneath, but if you go nice and slow. So now I'm going to add some Mod Podge around all of those edges and over the entire top. And you'll see that it took off some of the paint. So I'm just going to get an art brush and go around and touch it up. I'm okay with it not looking perfect because we are going to distress this piece. So after the touch-ups are made, I'm going to take that piece with the chicken wire. I'm just going to hot glue it right over the top of the cutting board, kind of like the middle of where the napkin is. It wasn't quite wide enough to go all the way over it, but that's okay. Again, we're going to we're going to do a little bit of distressing here, and I think that's just going to look fine. I love that look of the chicken wire over the top of the napkin. I'm going to take a burnt umber, which is a apple barrel pink color, and I'm just going to lightly go around, not a perfect covering. I kind of want it to look more like stained wood, but I did it with a brush. 
Came out pretty cute though. And I'm going to do the sides too, all the way around the edges there. And then I'm going to distress the cutting board. You can just see here, I'm doing like a, a little heavy dry brush on it where you get some on your brush, wipe quite a bit of it off, and then just go around the edges and kind of, you know, scruff it up a bit, if you will. And I really love the way that looked. I've got these pieces of rope that were left over from something. So I thought instead of wasting them, I would just glue them on in pieces and you'll see some of the ends here and there around the neck. But I like that look. It went along with the rustic, like maybe it was a little bit more worn out. And then I'm gonna take some of the twine from the Dollar Tree and just go around the natural edge of the inside of that cutting board, just so it kind of defines it a little more and you don't see right where the ends of the napkin were. And then I've got these really beautiful flowers from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut off just one little piece with the leaves and I'm going to glue it right in there. And I think this looks beautiful and I've already got it up in my kitchen. So you have to let me know what you think. I really like this one. on transfer it looks kind of like leopard spots or cheetah spots not sure and then Dollar Tree had this little teeny mini cutting board I was so excited when I found it I love working with cutting boards I think you already know that and then there's some agave chalk paint from Waverly I'm going to sand down that whole cutting board every part of it it was a little rough actually I'm going to take a piece of masking tape you could use painter's tape whatever you want and I'm just going to put it diagonally across from one edge to the other and I'm going to use the paint just on that one side I'm going to paint downward from the tape that way it won't bleed and I'm going to do the edges that are there too and then look removing the tape it came out perfectly I'll dry it with my heat tool from Amazon And I put the paper on top and the parchment paper and taped it down. And of course, you know, it didn't work again with the heat. It, I mean, it got it partially on there, but I have to use that little stick to rub it on. So it's funny, they're called iron-on transfers, these gold ones, but they're kind of like rub-on transfers. The other ones I used that weren't gold went on perfectly. You didn't have to do any like rubbing with the stick, but that's okay. It didn't take too long. I just went around and once I realized it was working, I kept checking, then I went ahead and I literally just pulled that off carefully. And look, it went on there, so cute. I think this is adorable and I have such a collection of cutting boards, this will be a nice addition. Just kind of something whimsy and fun. And then I just pulled off those edges that were hanging over. I wasn't trying to have it on the sides, just on the front. And I also left the back of this one blank in case I want to make a two-sided one in the future. I'm going to go ahead and use my matte Mod Podge. I'm going to cover the whole thing, front, sides, and the back. That way it's just nice and sealed. I will only use this for decor though. Hey, I hope you guys will come visit me on social media. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and TikTok. All the links are in the description box below. I am just going to add some tacky glue and put that white and gold twine. I'm going to wrap it around, kind of crisscross several times, and then I'll glue it on the back to end it and cut off the edge. I just thought it needed something around the handle. And that gold matches the little, like, cheetah spot. Gonna stay in this moment. Gonna lay here on the grass. Once I get that glued down, I am going to make little teeny shoestring bow out of that same twine and just hot glue it right to the center of where I tied the crisscross twine on the top. And that's it. Super easy and I think it just came out adorable. Let me know what you think. bamboo cutting boards because I've been wanting to make this for a while. I'm using some of the larger paint stir sticks as well that I got. I think I got them at Lowe's. And I'm going to get my brush wet with some water. I'm just going to spray it down a little bit because I want to water down the antique wax from Waverly because I'm not looking for a hard stain since this already has a stain on it. I just want to try to make it look a little darker because I'm going to be staining the paint stir sticks. And I'm going to use my Titebond glue and I'm going to 
attach two of the stir sticks together. I'm also going to add a couple dabs of hot glue so it'll hold now while I'm trying to finish the project. Then I'm going to take those stir sticks and I'm going to place them on the back so that just the handle is sticking up and I'm just going to hot glue those because it, it's going to be secure enough with that. And I found these Waverly adhesive stencils at Walmart. I love them. Oh my gosh, it's the only time I've ever not lead in a stencil and I'm going to use the pineapple and it just sticks right down which is wonderful and you can reuse them too they're easy to clean. I'm going to use my maize color which is like a yellow Waverly chalk paint and I'm just going to dab on with a sponge brush all through the pineapple and when it comes to the stem of the pineapple I'm going to use actually an Arteza marker and just kind of dab it in there as well and then the satisfying part peeling off the stencil and look how good it turned out you guys that's the best I've ever done and then I used a baby wipe and cleaned off the stencil so now it's ready to use again and I'm going to create these little edging pieces that I'm going to place on the four corners and I'm going to use that maize color and dab it on and I'm just loving the look it's just such a nice finished look and I can't wait to hang this in my kitchen. I've always wanted these little cutting boards with the handles and they're very expensive. So for this one, I mean, this is nothing. I decided to try to get the handle to match better with the cutting board and so I added a little bit of the yellow, almost like wiped it on like a stain and that did kind of help a little bit. I think if I started with the yellow I would have been better off. And now I'm just putting some Mod Podge over the top to seal it and then I have this rope from burlapfabric.com which I will link down below. I love the light color of it and I am just going to hot glue and wrap it around about three, four times and then I'm going to cut it off at the back and that'll be you know enough of that and then I'm going to make a little hanger in the back that you can't see on the handle. That way I can hang it in my kitchen and I just think it's going to be so cute. And my favorite way is to put the rope on with hot glue and then add a little bit of masking tape with some glue underneath it and just trim the sides and that seems to hold those on really well. Let me know what you guys think of this one. farmer's market calendar and the month that has the fresh squeezed lemonade. I got this cutting board for $3.99 at the Goodwill. Now I'm going to start sanding it because it's got a couple of spots on it that I don't like. Um, I end up staining it but I'm going to cut each piece based on those planks. I had a plan when I first started but I ended up abandoning it so I start off doing it this way and then I decided to take my X-Acto knife and fussy cut around everything. <laughs> You'll see, there it is. It took a while, but I just put a video or two on and that was it. Now I'm gonna take my wood finish by Minwax. It's called Weathered Oak. And I'm just gonna go ahead and stain the whole thing. This is after I sanded it. This really helps with getting the tone that I wanted on it and making it look more even. I'm gonna do that to both sides. Then I'm gonna use my Minwax polyurethane and I'm gonna use that for my decoupaging of the stuff I cut out. So I'm gonna put a coat underneath lay down, you know, I'm doing it in sections, lay down the letters and the picture and kind of push it down lightly with my finger and then I will go back over the top with the polyurethane. I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of it. I'm just kind of lining up the pieces, you know, where they matched up because originally I was going to do them as planks and then I realized, nah, but I love how it turned out. What do you think? those little boxes that usually have the drawers in them from the Dollar Tree and two of these little teeny cutting boards I got at Hobby Lobby on 40% off clearance. They're adorable. And then I always save little pieces of things that I don't use. So I've got a chicken, a tractor, and then this little like half circle shape. And these were literally such a good price. They were um, $3.99 each, but 40% off. And I'm gonna use the plaster color chalk paint from Waverly and the truffle color chalk paint from Waverly. Now, one of these boxes was already painted white previously, but I'm gonna sand the other two down and I'm still gonna go over them with the plaster color because it's just off white. And I know that other white will look different if I don't cover it. I'm gonna paint all three boxes, inside, outside, bottom, everything. And then I'm gonna sand down my little pieces. I'm gonna paint the half circle plaster on both sides and then just the back of the chicken and the tractor with the plaster color as well.
Next, I'm just going to kind of play around with them and determine where I would like to place them. So I've decided I'm going to use a combination of hot glue and liquid adhesive to put the chicken and the tractor on the two outside boxes. And I'm going to wait to add the little half circle. Now I'm going to take the truffle and a foam brush and just very lightly touch all of the edges, the entire box, every possible edge there is. And I'm just loving that little farmhouse antiquing look that it gives. It kind of goes into the wood a little bit, so it's, it's like not a clean line. And then I just added a little bit to the edges of those pieces and around the middle, very lightly dry brush. So now I can go ahead and figure out the placement of the half circle. Now I'm gonna take that liquid adhesive and the hot glue and attach all three boxes to each other. So that way I've got one piece now going forward. Then I'm gonna cut up some cardboard to lift up that middle piece because I can't get it on there without it interfering with the chicken and the tractor. And by doing this, it kind of puts it slightly above it and then I can get some glue on the back and attach it. And that really makes a huge difference. So if you're ever working with pieces that don't lay the same, this is a great way. Just kind of paint the edges of the cardboard like I did with the truffle and it will just be hidden and you really won't even notice it. Next, I'm going to take last year's farmhouse calendar and I'm going to go to the back of it and cut out this cute little picture that just says farm fresh. I'm going to trim it down to size so that it fits right on that little half circle. And I'm going to use that liquid adhesive on the back and I'm just going to put it on there and then get my brayer out and make sure every piece of it is touching the surface. And it's super, super cute. I'm gonna distress around the edges of that and I got a little too much on there so I just quickly grabbed a baby wipe and I was able to clean it up right away. Now I'm gonna take my little cutting boards and get rid of the tags and I'm gonna do a tight bond which is like a heavy duty wood glue and I'm gonna put that on both sides and then a little bit of hot glue just to get it to stick for right now so that I can keep working. And it's a little wider than the three boxes but because I have some pieces hanging over on the front I had to let the extra go to the back. You really won't notice it. Now, I'm gonna take a big piece of twine, it's a little thicker, make a knot, put a little drop of hot glue. I'm gonna wrap some tape around the edge of my twine. I'm gonna put some of the bigger beads on there. They're just natural, I'm not gonna paint them. I got them on Amazon, really good deal. I'm gonna put just enough to make it to the other side and then I'm going to string the twine right through, make another knot and then add a dab of hot glue to make sure it stays in place. And now I have a cute little farmhouse handle for this caddy. You could use this for so many different reasons, and that's it. That's all there is to it. cutting board and I'm also going to use four of the paint stir sticks which I'm going to cut down with my miter shears. They're in my Amazon store, a great tool. Would have to use a saw otherwise to cut these down. And I'm just marking them so that they'll all be the right size and I end up with four of them and I'm going to glue two together and then the other two together and then I'm going to glue them to each other on the sides and then I'll get a thicker handle because I'm going to take this bamboo cutting board and I'm going to place it horizontal so it's the long ways across. And now I'm just gonna outline where the stir sticks are gonna go for the handle, use my tight bond glue, and then after I spread it on, I'm gonna put some hot glue all the way around the edges so I get that fast hold while the tight bond is doing its stuff and drying overnight, and that way I can keep working. I decided to try painting that maize color on the bare stir sticks first to see if that would get me closer and then do the antique wax over the top of that. Just wipe it on with a little baby wipe. And you know, I actually think that worked better and I will do that in the future if I use one of these bamboo cutting boards and it matches better the stain. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. And I'm doing the back the same way, put the yellow first and then this wax over the top of it. And now I'm gonna do the cutting board just very lightly because I do wanna make sure it gets a little bit of that brownish color in there. And now I'm gonna get out my stencils again from Waverly, the adhesive ones, and I'm gonna take these little pond leaves and I'm gonna use my Kills White Primer. I'm gonna dab that on and I'm gonna put one in the bottom left corner and one in the upper right corner kind of facing the opposite direction. 
And then I have another stencil, which is also by Waverly, but they're made out of cardboard. So you really have to be careful. So if you notice, as I'm dabbing, I'm holding down the opposite side with a pencil to make sure that it doesn't bleed. And actually it worked out pretty well. It's just a little more effort. Take it off and there's a little break in it. So I just took a little art brush and I filled that in and I'm gonna cover it again with Mod Podge and I'm gonna wrap the rope around just like I did in the other one. And this one's done and you guys, I love it. Thanks so much for watching. You are truly a blessing to me. If you want to hang out with me a little bit longer, I've got another video on the screen that I think you will really like. I invite you to click on it. And if you do, I will see you there. God bless you. Bye.